from a book called The Book That Transforms Nations. The Power of the Bible to Change Any Nation, written by Corin Luddingham. I'm sorry, Lauren Cunningham. We want him to read to us a story like Papa Lauren. The story that many of us have heard him say many times of how he met a woman in Mexico in a faded red dress and how that impacted him and how that story continues to impact us. Paragraph is titled, A Haunting Question. Putting the Bible in everyone's hand has been my dream for a very long time. Ever since I was a boy and thought of writing God's word on the moon, I know we can get a, his book to everyone. When I was a young man, God gave me a dramatic example of how we could put the word his word in people's hands. It was 1967, and I was with a YWAM convoy traveling through Mexico to Central America. We'd stopped in a dusty Mexican town to repair a flat tire. While some worked on that, the rest of us delivered a Gospel of John to every home, then held an open air preaching service. After meeting a woman in a faded red dress that came up to me, my Spanish isn't very good, but I understood her to say, there's no place in my town to get a Bible, and there aren't any in the towns around here. Do you have a Bible in my language? I managed to find a Spanish Bible for her. She grasped it to her chest. Muchísimas gracias, Señor. As we drove away, the woman questioned whether they continued to haunt me. Do you have a Bible in my language? Then a picture suddenly came before my eyes. I believe it was what the Bible calls a vision. I saw a big truck, not a semi, but more like a large moving van. Painted on the side was, Solo los testonestos, temen la verdad, Santa Biblia gratis. I didn't know Spanish well enough to think in the language, so seeing this language was a, seeing this sentence was a complete surprise. I translated it so slowly in my mind. It meant, only the dishonest fear the truth. Free Bibles. What an exciting thought. The phrase, only the dishonest fear the truth, was completely new to me, and it rang in my mind. It was especially pertinent at this time as communists were spreading their cause across Latin America. As the vision continued, I saw myself with others standing in the back of the truck, handing Bibles into eager hands as fast as we could. While the exact fulfillment of that vision hasn't happened yet, we've been involved in several Bible distribution projects immediately after our experience in that town. When we arrived in Mexico City, I went to the Bible Society and found out how many copies they would let me have. Then I phoned friends and raised the money, buying 50,000 New Testaments. Our teams distributed them on various university campuses in the city. Over the next few years, our workers were able to place New Testaments in every home in scores of villages and towns in several states in Mexico. We felt good about that, but God had greater challenges and excitement ahead for us. I finally made it to uh, Australia and it's really fantastic to be here. In the first three days I had the privilege to catch up with family I have not seen in, I think when I was 12 years old, it's the last time I saw my cousin and that was when 
my aunt passed away. So I haven't spoken to her for such a long time. And when we arrived, that's Penny and I on the east coast of Australia, she took us into her house and really, her husband and her just went out of the way to bless us. And I just want to say thank you so much. We had a fantastic time connecting. And that's when I once again realized, where blood does not walk, it crawls. It was wonderful.
this? People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4, also Deuteronomy 8, 3. Therefore, we will pray and do everything possible around the world to advance the Bible by translation, production, distribution, education, and engagement. Happy 80th birthday, Lauren. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16. Preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16, 15. And go and disciple every nation. Matthew 28, 19. And that's the... That's the scripture for my sermon tonight. <laughs> so because we are YWAM together, is it all right if your family here helps you blow out the candles? Yeah. All right. I need 80 people. <laughs> 80 candles. We need everybody around, around this cake on the count. Look at some of these pictures, and I commit to end Bible poverty now. And look, look at this, look at this. There are more and more and more and more. And Lauren, it's a wave that is growing and growing all the time. Amazing, amazing. But Lauren, this is the first sample of the Source View and Sphere View Bible in digital form. It's not, it's not yet an app that's going to take a few more months of work. Happy birthday, Lauren. So tonight, they're going to put up on the screen a website, and this demo, not the whole Bible, but four books, you can all have for free as an anticipation of the app that we hope will be available before Christmas. So that website will come up, take note of that, go on there, sign up, and start enjoying the first ever Source View Sphere of Your Bible. We received this has a great sacrifice of praise on the part of David and 200 plus YWAMers that worked with him. And we do this in anticipation that multiplied millions will be able to search the Word of God, not only in source view, but combinations with sphere view, and later verb view and command views. And as over a billion ways they can search the Bible through these combinations. And Lord, we know that you're infinite and we're just scratching the surface. But when we see all the ways that your word comes alive and it becomes applied not only in our lives, but in societies, in nations around the world. We stand in humility to receive this wonderful gift of love. But we think of your gift that you gave. You so loved the world. You not only gave your only begotten Son, but you said about Him, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The Word came and put on flesh. And we see that Jesus is the Word within the Word. 
And so if you have given such a precious gift, this becomes just a token of what you have done. And we would bless this token, even as the Gutenberg Press was a token. And yet we realize in the history of mankind what is being done here, digital on digital. That's never been done before. And to actually hold this in my hand, realizing digital on digital for the first time. It's like receiving the, the copies of the Great Commission in the King James Version over 400 years old. But I think of you, Lord, in eternity past, giving the word that actually created the universe. And you sent the word that creates for us to become new creatures in Christ. So how can we bless, Lord, something so precious? So we call on you to bless it. Amen. You to multiply it. Amen. You to deliver it. We'll be your hands, we'll be your feet, we'll be your, your mouth. We want to know your pleasure in getting this word to the multiplied millions into billions. And Lord, I just think of the word you gave me, I think it was 2008, to David Hamilton, as we prayed together in that cabin down in Central America, Costa Rica. And you said that he was going to be used to touch millions over the internet. Neither of us knew how that would be, but you did it. Amen. And you're doing it. But not just David. You're doing it for all of us, Lord, here under this tent tonight, and even outside and around about the tent. We can all hear from you and do something that is amazing beyond our ability. When we give our all in our gifts and callings, you add what we can't do. And so we thank you and bless this to the multitudes, to the millions, and then the billions around the world that they will have access to treasures here on earth that cannot be compared with any other treasure other than Jesus himself. And we thank you that Jesus is that word within the word. And we bless not only this gift that we're giving to the world and was given as a token to me on behalf of all of those in our family called YWAM. But I would pray your blessing, Lord, upon all of those, not only that are here, but those that are listening in, and those that will hear later, and those will hear from others later. I just pray your blessing on them, that they will be multipliers of the word within the word, Jesus, and the word of God that has come to us down through the ages, as Dr. Carol has mentioned tonight, I just pray, God, that you will bless the world through YWAM. And not to think of ourselves here, but look at the end of your concern of the least, the last, the lost, and give them Jesus and give them your word. And we pray this blessing in Jesus' name. We thought you should have a very special copy of the Great Commission. This is Dr. <laughs> Dr. Scott Carroll. It's, uh, thank you. It, <laughs> you know, Lauren, that the most influential English translation, and one of the most influential translations of all times, is the King James Bible. And it was first printed in 1611. It was a gigantic folio Bible for the pulpit. But the printer 
the following year, decided to print a, a personal copy of it, a small quarto copy of the, of the King James Bible. And uh, this was the Bible that was taken by missionaries around the world and uh, in, impacted our globe uh, for the cause of Christ. And we have something very special for you uh, that comes from a first edition King James 1612. They're the wow. pages of the Great Commission. And they're to celebrate uh, your life in ministry. Thank you so much. So as the four children... So as these four children give glory on these gifts, they are pages from the 1612 version of the King James, the very first edition, Mark 16, Matthew 28, John 21, and Acts 1, four Great Commission passages. They are 403 years old, so you're just a young and worn, only a fifth as old as these pages from the Word of God. The Word of God is enduring, and may it always endure in our hearts. To be able to meet for fellowship regularly each week and to have a biblical teaching and worship with others in the body of Christ. Number four, to have a Christian education available for their children. Number five, to have the basic necessities of life, food, water, clothing, shelter, and health care. And number six, to lead a productive life of fulfillment spiritually, mentally, socially, emotionally, and physically. To Lauren Cunningham, on your 80th birthday, it really was God. The plaque continues saying, thank you for hearing and obeying so that ways of young people could go from everywhere to everywhere with the gospel of Jesus. With love from your YWAM family, have fun trying to get that back to Kona, Hawaii. <laughs> except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The blowing of the pawn shell signifies the calling of the people. are missionaries that have been sent of you, you said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. Oh, we got to do that again. <laughs> this is a heavy canoe. I sense there's two more of these big vessels, and we're pulling them across the land portage right now. Stir up your holy faith. Hallelujah. Despise not that they have small beginnings. Is anything too hard for me, says the Lord? Do you see the testimony of what I've done already? It is but a small thing. And so we take the ropes, don't we? We say one, two, three. Take the mark down! Mark this day as it was marked with us. The responsibility, there's a solemn responsibility with this, but also, what a joy. So, what God sent me to pray for is the strength to, to, to face challenges and the other one is the, that God will fill your, your heart with the Holy Spirit. The feathers, they are the, grand, the grandpa generations, and they 
They are the ones that um, have the experience and also give the support.